2040, the world will need up to 30% more energy than we do today. To make this imperative compatible with current environmental challenges, innovation has a key role to play. This is the challenge that lies behind the theme of this year's Global Innovation Index, namely energizing the world with innovation. One of the co-editors of the report and executive director for Global Indices at INSEAD, Bruno Lanval, joins us now. Thank you for joining us. Very true. Could you tell us who leads the GII rankings in 2018? I understand it's relatively stable in the top 10, but has, have there been big changes in the top 25? Yes, yeah, stability at the top, clearly. Uh, this is the first time ever since the creation of the GII 11 years ago that the top 10 are exactly the same group as last year. Few changes. The uh, US loses two ranks, uh, the Netherlands gains four, but it is the exact same group. Um, the picture changes if we go to the top uh, 25. There we see Germany making a spectacular jump from 19th to 13th. We see also Israel moving up four ranks, but the big story is that uh, China continues its progression and is now becoming the number 17th among world innovators. How can China's rise in the rankings show the way for other middle-income economies? Yes, this rise of China is accompanied by a similar upward move by other middle-income countries. Malaysia, for instance, ranked 35 in this year's ranking. We also see a number of middle-income countries between the positions 40 and 50, uh, like Croatia, Russia, Romania, Thailand, and Turkey, for example. All of these countries, like China, have put the accent on education, especially in STEM, and fundamental research. How can countries continue to increase innovation in the face of energy or environmental crises? The 2018 GII report shows that the current energy environment equation cannot be solved without a significant push on innovation. Such innovation must affect all four parts of the energy chain, production, transport, storage, and consumption. On the production side, clearly uh, our production of energy can be greener. Renewable energies need investment, they need a bigger push. On the transport side, it's clear that, especially if electricity becomes the energy of choice, the ability to transport electricity efficiently on long distances will be key to solving uh, the energy problem we have. Third, storage will have a critical role to play. High power batteries, ability to actually deliver energy when it is needed, will have a critical role to play in changing the energy equation. And last but not least, smart grids, ability to inform consumers on the consequences of their choices and how energy policies are shaped, will have an important role to play on the consumption side. Who are the innovation achievers amongst developing countries this year? And how can their investment in innovation become a virtuous cycle of development? Apart from the countries we've already mentioned, uh, Singapore, China, Malaysia, we see champions in each of the regions of the world. For example, in Latin America, Chile, Costa Rica, Mexico are leading the pack. In Africa, we see South Africa, Mauritius, Kenya uh, ahead. In the Arab world, the United Arab Emirates continue to be the innovation champion. But every year, as innovation becomes a national priority in an increasing number of countries, new contenders appear. There is a noticeably optimistic message in this year's report as global business R&D spending has continued to increase. Would you like to discuss examples of countries that have translated investments in education and R&D budgets into high quality innovations? Well, the optimistic message that uh, the report delivers on private R&D spending is mitigated by the less than optimistic message about public spending on education and uh, research. With the exception of China, uh, which clearly has increased its investment in that direction, overall in Europe and North America, uh, we see a plateauing of public spending. And that's a concern. Uh, China has clearly shown how public spending and public policies prioritizing uh, education and fundamental research can translate into a better innovation performance. India 
is uh, addressing its own education challenges. All over the world, the awareness is there, but again, the spending is not necessarily aligned with what the uh, positions uh, made by decision makers uh, would tend to show otherwise. Uh, it is clear that, and we're going to see more of that in the future, those countries like uh, Switzerland, like Singapore, like Finland, who have made the choice of changing their own education system, making it more attuned to the needs of the future of work, to the needs of what innovation will be in the uh, next uh, decades, um, is clearly the good choice. And we expect that more countries are going to fall into that line uh, in the near future. How can public policy encourage higher levels of innovation in energy production and efficient technology? Well, this is one area in which public policy and public leadership will be critically important. The main reason is that energy policies versus uh, environmental policies are seen as offering room for conflict. One needs to reconcile the two, to say these are the ways in which we can both address our energy needs and protect the environment. And there are ways to do that. There are everyday innovative ways to do that. Innovation is clearly part of the solution. For example, in Africa, fuel wood has been used traditionally as the main source of energy. Uh, it is clear that no uh, disruption should be created by suddenly outlawing the use of fuel wood for energy. Bringing clean electricity to the African continent is therefore an objective that the world should pursue together. Similarly, uh, the breakthrough we've seen recently about uh, EPR, that is possibly clean nuclear energy made by China, may change radically the innovation energy equation in the years to come. Altogether, we absolutely need to address the innovation slash energy slash environment equation because it is a condition to have a world that would be at the same time more peaceful and less unequal. Thank you very much for joining us, Bruno. Thank you.